Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at Grasshopper again and we're having this very interesting kind of facade which is basically this um, vertical facade which can change in its frequency and kind of has this like droplet kind of texture like water almost and there can also be a change of curvature in that, that form as well as well obviously the distance in the, in the z direction uh, which can be manipulated uh, to the needs and then obviously the amount and as well the distance in between those. Additionally to that, not only is it possible to um, get those things but then we're having as well um, the laser cut data as for it as well. For example, this would be looking like this. So you have a completely laser cutable file which can be put out there and be exactly transformed to the way uh, you want it to have it look like this. So we're going through this like step by step in order for you to understand it and um, continue working with it. So um, to basically start this we're gonna make um, an array of points. Those will be extruded upwards. Then those points will be moved back and forth according to a sinus function and then put it back into the form so that its shape will have this droplet effect. So we're going to first construct a point at the beginning and we're going to make an array. So we make a series of points that will increase by its number. So we're gonna choose now like 23 points and so the series on a separate count the points will increase one by one each. So we're gonna put this into the x coordinates of the points. And now you see we have uh, a nice number, uh, like a nice number amount of points. And obviously you can incre increase or decrease those. And then we also might um, include a step um, between those if you wanna increase or decrease the gap of those things. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate those points upwards in order for it to kind of um, create a curvature that can be placed upon this. So for example if you use curve in Rhino you see it uses always points like this and we basically want those points that are de defined here and we want those points also in different directions as well. But we first create basically the points that go like um, just like five points like this that go like straight down this line like this, 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 and this and then we're gonna move them accordingly um, back and forth. So like the grasshopper. So we're gonna use just the uh, move commands. Oh no, we're gonna use an array command um, or we have, we have basically the points that we have here and we're going to use a series again to facilitate those upward movements. So we're going to use again 23. That would be the amount of it. And the problem now is um, they need to be grafted, um, but in the Z direction. So I'm going to put this back here. Pull that. And now we have the points in the Z direction as well. So now that we have the points there, we want to move them back and forth in the Y direction. And we're gonna use the move command for that. However, we need to have an amount to move uh, there. So we wanna create points that they can react to. So we're gonna use the command points, right click on it, set multiple points that we wanna use case we just use three and those will be the points that they have react uh, need to react to it okay so those are the points and now we have to see because in the example we have three points for example and it needs to be that it only takes the closest point to it because otherwise it has three values it just needs to have one value so we're going to use the command um, distance or closest point and 
the cloud will be the points that we're putting in there and the points that we have are the points um, that can be used. So now we have the distance between the closest points and depending on which the point is nearest to it will take that point. So we can already um, move the points to the um, y direction. Let's try this out here. Distance. Get this here. And those are the points. However, you see it's kind of well. It actually still works, but uh, in my case, it's a little bit too extreme. And the problem is also that if you have the points here, you can. It will be just like one time, as you see. It will not have this like wave effect. To combat this is a good way to use the sinus function because if you think of a way of repeating the numbers um, because for a sinus function the after 3.1 as far as I know the amount will like start at uh, 1 again and like it basically repeats itself so or like go to the negative as we see here and it will it will create values between minus one and one. So we're gonna put those into the y factor and put, yeah, and you move them into the y direction. And now we have this nice, very smooth kind of like water uh, effect that we want to, to use. So we're gonna use a multiplier in order for it to be more extreme or less extreme depending uh, on our needs just gonna use a 2x multiplier maybe just wanna be like a little less so it's gonna be very subtle and those points as well now we wanna create the curve that combines them together so we're going to use NURBS curve commands and gonna use put those together and as you see right now they're horizontally um, a way to combat is this is for example to use the command flip matrix and then you might have them here now in uh, uh, the vertical uh, as well however it might be more sufficient because I think now the the points might not react correctly to it so I recommend to put in this the flip command um, before you import uh, the points here and in that way you have them correctly at the same spot so yeah just so you know um, you need to have it before you control the distance between the points because otherwise it will take the data from the uh, other points basically okay now we have those points let's clean this up a little bit and, uh, see if it still works correctly so we have those points with them around and they have this like wave function and in order for this like the frequency to change we can have we need to put another multiplier in here before it goes into the uh, wave function so we can increase the like frequency or decrease it in order for it to be more smooth or for it to be more drastic as you see, still works. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have um, a second line that defines the place here and it will be connected to it. And so then it gains some thickness or like some um, some 3D components to it because at the moment it's still just a line. So a way to do is because we have already the list of points that we have here and they would work perfectly just for Im implementing them into the NURBS curve as well like uh, well, check the right commands like this and obviously we can connect them all together but you will see that there will be a problem sometimes with the curves because they will overlap and might not be correct because this is not something that you can use in real life because there is a very very very, very slim um, curve so to combat this is we just gonna move um, the curve into a certain direction um, to um, the y direction and then we have the problem uh, 
uh, very simply solved and you can also adjust it depending on your needs of how uh, thick do you want this area to be. So now we have this like this and if you want to increase or decrease this again we can simply very simply do this by just changing the slider. So right now we have um, the thing in 3D set up but for example if you want to have now um, yeah, bake it and basically yeah you know you can turn it like this and now you have to use every single one of them and like, rotate it again and uh, rotate it again and rotate it again and then you, you see how they're overlapping so you move them somewhere here and you have to put them like this each of the single ones so it's quite time consuming because you want to have the outlines for the laser cutter in order for it to be working correctly and what we're going to do here is basically we're going to script this obviously so it's going to be a little bit faster so a good way to do is this by making using the command of brep edges and with that we have the outlines of the surface that we created here um, however they're just like not joined yet so we're going to join them together for it to the be one thing the next thing we're going to do is we're going to need to create a middle point here uh, that will function as a rotating point for those things. The best way actually to do is because we already have um, the main points here and we can just um, right here. you see they're like here in the middle and we're just gonna move them up by half of the total distance and this distance is like um, defined here right so that's the, that's the distance and the steps so we're gonna create we we want to have this distance divided by two in order for it to uh, have this point so we're gonna actually this is two so we're gonna multiply those two things together so the amount of steps by the amount of gaps in between those steps and then we're gonna be divide this by two And now, well, we need to put the z direction, it's not grafted. And now we would have a point that corresponds to the mass middle, more or less, of the, uh, of the thing that we want to have. So, we're gonna, uh, what we're gonna do next now is we're gonna rotate it accordingly, like we, how we showed, just showed before. So, we're gonna need to first rotate it like this here so it gonna moves in the um, uh, y z direction first so we're gonna use a y z z plane and put them on all of those points and then we're gonna rotate it by the geometry that we have by 90 degrees to put in the angle here and then we use the plane that we have here already and we want to actually graph that because otherwise it will duplicate uh, too many times so now we already have the thing rotated as we wanted to have and just kind of this visible so now what we're dealing with here so now we have the rotated plane that we can use but we still need to rotate it um, basically from here 90 degrees again. So we're just going to use the same amount of points and rotate them through an XZ um, plane and gonna rotate them again for 90 degrees. And the next thing that was also happening in Rhino as well is that you see there is quite an overlap in between those outlines of the surfaces. So we're just gonna um, make them move um, apart from each other in, in a certain series again. And actually, um, we have to use the same amount of steps that we had um, in the first time here 
and at the S accounts and the step I think we can just adjust individually for now um, in order for it to work and we need to put this in the X direction and we also need to graph this as well so as you see now that works quite fine and again if we're gonna adjust um, the, the, the length of the thing if you're gonna adjust the 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 craziness of it let's say or even the frequency it all adjusts during it and then obviously you can also have this as a preview here and maybe when I have something more more extreme like that I'm gonna make it bigger as well and now I want to move that around a little bit higher like this and now you see a little bit less extreme yeah and now you have a perfect amount of things and you just can basically bake them group them together and we can also give, the, give it a certain thickness as well it's gonna in the render six it's very usable so we got in the rendered more you see, you see a very easy very like quick design of a facade that can like put into any environments and then you can just start rendering so yeah thanks for watching I uh, hope you enjoyed it and if you have any more questions any ideas um, yeah please let me know and I might show it or might try to solve this in the next video so I also learn something and you will also uh, have some benefit for it. So thanks for watching and have a great day.